Welcome back to the garage where we're continuing work on Project Unintended Spending, the 1987 Audi CS Quattro Turbo that I bought with many, many issues. If you're just now joining the series, be sure to check the link in the description below for the playlist that shows us how we ended up where we are today. In this video, we're gonna be tackling the rear brakes, not just refreshing the rear brakes, but fixing one critical issue that's been there since the very beginning and that is the inoperable parking brake. Well, it's actually operable now. It does kind of hold the car in place. The problem now is that it doesn't release. The rear calipers have a bell crank mechanism that is actuated when you pull the handbrake, but it doesn't let go when you release the handbrake. So I've got a solution over on the bench. As you can see here, we have a bunch of new parts and they represent basically the entirety of the Audi 5000's rear brake system. So let's just start off here on the left side where the most critical part is presented. And that is brand new caliper and bracket assemblies for the rear. Now, it was impossible for me to find even rebuild kits for the original rear calipers on this Audi 5000. However, after a lot of research and parts cross-referencing, I learned that the rear calipers on an Audi 90, which is a later model Audi, share the same caliper and bracket assembly and the same handbrake fixture that's part of the rear caliper. When I learned this fact, it unlocked a huge parts resource available online. So I was able to pick up brand new rear calipers for a very reasonable price. Now there were two different calipers offered on both the Audi 5000 and the Audi 90, but the one on my particular car uses a solid rear rotor. Now the Audi 90 offered two different rear rotors as well, which means you have two different kinds of calipers. They offered a vented rear caliper on the 20 valve engine, but on the 10 valve engine, it was a solid rear caliper. So I just had to find the one that fit that particular model and it fits my particular car's configuration. Now the Audi 5000 also offered a vented rear rotor set up as well and a lot of people have upgraded to that but that requires finding rotors that fit that and a couple other components and i just didn't want to have to deal with that i wanted to fit exactly how the car is configured currently and the important part of this it's not that the calipers don't work on my car but it's this bell crank assembly that's seized and you can see that this is very much a freely moving part now and this is what the handbrake cable slots into and grabs onto right here. So when you pull the lever, it pulls this bell crank assembly, which pushes the piston outward and clamps the pads against the rotor. So instead of having to figure out how to rebuild the old calipers or trying to find new old stock parts, I just went ahead and bought brand new calipers for the left and right. It's gonna be much easier just to install these. It's gonna be a quicker reassembly process. Now these calipers came with new banjo bolts and crush washers, so that's always nice. Then I've got some Ate Type 200 brake fluid because obviously if we're removing the calipers, we're opening the brake fluid system, which means we'll have to bleed the entire system. Now I've also picked up some new rear brake hoses. The ones on the car don't necessarily look terrible, but they all are old and it's always a good idea to replace these rubber brake lines. The other reason I got these is because the, the fittings look a little rusty on my car and I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to get these off without mutilating the old ones. So it's just always a good idea to get new brake lines if you're going to be removing a caliper. Then we move on to new brake pads for the rear. So we've got this set of new brake pads. And these also came with some caliper hardware like the sliding pins and bolts and boots. I won't be using that since the calipers come with that already pre-assembled. And then lastly, we have new rear brake discs. Again, there were two different styles offered on the Audi 5000, a solid rotor like these, or a veined rotor that came on what I think was the touring package or the towing package, basically meaning if you have a lot of weight over the rear axle, it's a better idea to have a, a veined and cooled uh, rear brake rotor. I'm not concerned with that on this car. Uh, the rear brakes don't do a whole lot as far as stopping goes, but they're definitely needed for holding the car when stationary, such as the parking brake. So I've got brand new solid rotors made by Paget. 
very high quality and they're coated so they won't rust. So that's all of the new parts that we'll need. Now it's just a matter of taking the old ones off and dealing with some slightly corroded hardware. Let's get started.
All right, so that is the passenger side and driver side now complete. That's right, I did the driver side already as well because it's the same procedure. Now, it was not difficult other than having to use the torch to loosen up the brake lines. I knew I'd be fighting some corrosion there, and luckily I was able to loosen them up without damaging the hard line. So look how beautiful all of that looks. As expected, those Audi 90 calipers fitted up perfectly. And now there is no resistance at that bell crank for the e-brake assembly. So all of a sudden the back end of this car is looking very refreshed. Driver's side went together just the same way as the passenger side. Nothing really complicated to note at all. I did spray some wax oil coating on these brake lines so that it fights any further corrosion in the future. So that if you ever have to get back in here, it won't be impossible. So yes, I went ahead and painted the control arms just a little bit to stave off a little bit of corrosion as well. But we're not done here. And the reason being that we need to bleed the brake lines and then adjust the emergency brake cable. Now I did slacken off the emergency brake cables at the e-brake handle itself underneath the car by the transmission. But before we mess with that, we do need to bleed these brake lines since we opened it. To do the brake bleeding, I'll use my trusty pressure bleeder that I've used on multiple vehicles. It makes this suddenly a one-man operation and simplifies the entire process. So you just fill that container up with your brake fluid of choice, pressurize it, I've got it sitting at about 11 or 12 PSI, and you hook it up with the proper attachment to your brake fluid reservoir. And all you have to do is open the bleed nipples on the calipers, and you're done. So there you have it, brakes are bled and the emergency brake has been adjusted and it appears to be holding really well. All I need to do now is throw the wheels back on there and test it out on an incline. And here are all the old parts I pulled off. Everything is looking very used right here. Although the pads had a lot of life on them, I have a feeling these were replaced and then the car sat and was only driven in winters probably for the past 10 years at least. That's why it all looks so terrible. But the calipers overall aren't in terrible condition, but something is sticking and not allowing this bell crank to ratchet back. These are the original VW Audi Girling calipers, so they might be worth saving in case someone wants to strip them, rebuild them, so they have completely original set. But definitely not going back on this car. All right, so here is the test. Obviously I'm in neutral, the car is on, I'm going to set the e-brake, would you look at that, it's holding in place, I can't believe it, it seems silly to be excited about something so simple, but when it doesn't work, it's as if you can't use the car as a car, because you simply shouldn't leave a manual transmission car in gear as your as your single way of keeping it stationary on an incline. You need a parking brake. 
Look at that. Turn it off. There it is. Awesome. Call that, job done. All right, so that's all we've got for this video. I'm very pleased with now taking care of the second biggest issue with this car, the parking brake. So now we can start looking into the front suspension and steering. I'm just waiting on parts to get here, but that's going to be a big multi-video series. So until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you all again next time.